This is the original spreaded sweet potato I placed in water and well, as you can see, it's grown out of control. Although I love the dramatic look of the leaves falling over the grow bed and past the tank, the root system has actually started to become invasive, so it's time to start separating each individual vine from the sweet potato and create some slips. Each vine is considered a slip which will form its own root system with tubers. Because signs of nutrient deficiencies have started to show up on some of the vines, I flipped the sweet potato upside down and started pruning. While I'm doing this, I'm saving the greener leaves for dinner. My goal is to trim each slip down so it's more manageable while it grows its own intact fruit system, kinda like a leaf propagation of a cutting. Showing a little skin, uh, <clears throat> sweet potato skin, you can see how each vine is connected to the mother tuber. To separate, just gently pop it off and remove the lower leaves closest to where it was connected to the mother. The purpose of this is that there are nodes along the vine which will form roots and you do not want the lower leaves to rot while being submerged in soil or water to form the new root systems. To successfully grow sweet potato slips, you do not have to allow the vines to grow this long, nor do you need an aquaponic system. You can achieve similar results by placing a tuber in a cup of water and letting nature do its thing. I was actually inspired to do this because I saw a video where backyard farmer Pat sauteed the leaves of a mature sweet potato plant with garlic and oil, and I just had to try it. The beautiful thing about this is it's a two for one. I'm getting tons of slips from the process for future sweet potatoes, as well as more than enough greens for dinner tonight. Pretty sure I could also use this very sweet potato as I normally would too. Comment down below if you have any experience growing slips and if you've tried the mother after this whole process. I'm placing each individual slip back into the grow bed and as you can see, I dramatically cut these vines down. They grew like a weed and I'm not surprised. Morning glories are a common weed where I live and this sweet potatoes grow pattern was true to its heritage. The leaves are simply my initial bounty for growing such an abundant plant. Speaking of food abundance, goldfish produce three times more waste than other types of fish the same size. It is thanks to these guys we have a seemingly endless supply of greens for all of our meals. For a small space, we grow a ton of food thanks to our goldfish aquaponic system. The fish waste from these guys not only fertilizes our aquaponic bed, but also our 200 plus indoor potted plants and entire backyard garden. We still go to the farmer's market and grocery store for a majority of our food, but our little fish tank that could is helping us minimize our footprint in small ways on a daily basis. This is a cabinet we got off Facebook Marketplace and we will be upcycling it into a greenhouse cabinet for future seedlings. And as a sign from the universe, we are on the right track. The seller offered us two cool carved jade pieces, one of them being a pair of goldfish. Make sure to subscribe to see how we bring this all together.